Hello, welcome to another episode of Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. In this episode, it's a follow-up to the last two episodes where we came out to check out Cairns, uh, one of the many structural types out here in Gilbert Hill State Forest. If you're new to the series, the first whole part of the series of which we're in the middle of, we're just checking out different structural types of Native American uh, artifacts, um, relics, ruins, prayer seats, standing stones, perch boulders, effigy, a whole number of them. Cairns is a large group of a type of structure. And we came out to see one uh, that sort of had a U-shape, didn't really have a lot of um, uh, anticipation for any real deep learning, just wanted to show what Cairns look like and move on to another couple Cairn types. But as I dug into these, particularly in post-production, I noticed the structure was strikingly similar. On the map, these two cairns, the ones we did in the last episode, are about a half mile apart. They are almost north-south to each other. This one faces east, the other one faces west. So I thought, well, maybe there's a relationship. We'll check it out. In the last episode, we took an exit azimuth. If this is a generally a U-shape, which I'll show you a close-up in a second, it faces outward. Where does it face? Well, we ran into, as we traversed about 300 yards, a couple of other potential structures right along that line, or pretty close to it. We're gonna do the same here. We're going to take a qu another quick look at the structure here, take a look at how it's U-shaped with some stones put in the middle. I thought maybe it just fallen in or been knocked in, but it's quite possible these were, this is totally intact and fully intentional. And the direction it faces has a purpose. We're gonna explore that purpose. So let's take a closer look and then we're gonna head out. Okay, this cairn is facing right toward us here. And the way I view this is, think about this arm here and an arm here and some rocks piled in the middle, not just one pile of rocks or a conical pile which is piled up over time because you can see this is sort of straight across ish right and you see there's some depth back into there but let's walk around it and look at the structure you can see particularly back here this is really well built up there's not a lot of rocks having fallen off the structure is fairly clear Moving around here, straight up the back now. Structure's very clear. May have one rock coming off here. But you can really see that structure around it. Now, there's another uh, attribute to this site that I want to point out. We've seen it once before, and we are going to see it again. And it is the mound that this is built on to make its base level. And if you can just see how this slopes down right here, that's about two and a half feet. Right. I'm just gonna show that. And it grades up toward the front. It's sloped down here, it's sloped down here, and it grades till the point where Tully is, where it's flush with the ground. That, uh, that, that Mound wasn't created by glaciers. We saw this in, uh, I think it's episode four uh, of the dual prayer seats. The first of the dual prayer seats, the rear prayer seat was built on exactly the same type of mound. So you can see just the earth was moved to make this level. It's an interesting feature. We're gonna see that time and time again out here. All right, if we look this as the exit you're going to go 70 69 70 degrees east head out that way and we're going to see what we find now unlike the last time we did this um i sort of sped through it i'm not sure how compelling that was but i also want to work on a little narrative here around the theory 
uh, of why I believe many of these are man-made structures. They're not glacier made. And, uh, and we'll cover that as we go along. Now let me pack up my, my camera here and we'll head out that direction. All right. We're gonna head down to this trail ahead of us here. And then we're gonna divert around what is a fairly sizable thicket of prickers that I could not get through down that direction. What I did do as I pre-walked this is that I pinned the edge of that spot. As you can see, hopefully right here, I'm going to use this line. This is where we are now, prayer seat or the cairns behind us. This is, uh, I, I pinned it 69 degrees, so I know that I can walk, and this is a lot easier to work with um, than going tree to tree and orienteering. Let's uh, just talk a little bit about the the reason why I think these are not glacier made, that they're Native American made, get a lot of comments. Well, you know, it was something piled up by farmers, uh, walls were made by colonists for penning in animals or clearing fields. As you can see around me here, uh, not a lot of agriculture between these boulders. This is uh, this area right here, and a lot of this in this forest, just complete rock fields. Uh, so, the way I approach it is slightly different. And that is, we know from carbon dating, uh, the oldest carbon dating in this area is a fire pit in Ipswich, Massachusetts. And that is about 40 miles that direction. A couple days walk. So we know indigenous people were here at least 9,000 years ago. There's some other references to almost 12,000 years ago. So we think of folks being here for over 10,000 years, probably left something behind. The structures that I'm pointing out here are all documented types of structures uh, in a, a variety of different publications. In each of the episodes, I reference uh, the uh, the documents, the books, the articles that I'm using for comparison. And they're all very similar. Right? You, can see, you can see the comparisons for yourself if you wanna, wanna look up the references. So with the amount of structural types that are out here and the fact that many of these types were one, documented use back into the 1600s in the book Manitou. Uh, Maver and Dix go back to several of the people who came very early on to try to convert Native Americans to Christianity, and they witnessed some of the ceremonies and referenced them and the types of structures they used. Many of them are the ones that we're pointing out here. Additionally, Roger Williams, the founder of the Rhode Island Colony, made the same written observations. Additionally, many of these structures exist outside of areas where glacial activity was in North America in the last ice age. So you put all that together, and if the attributes of these things are similar, and there are enough of them that it appears that there was intent on how they're set up, and as we're doing today, possibly even uh, an angular relationship, they're pointing to one another, seems to me that that's the most logical conclusion one can draw. Lots of different opinions about that, but I wanted to, wanted to lay that out uh, as a theory here. So, I'm gonna turn the camera around. I'm gonna show you where we are right now. One, take a quick look at the map. Nope, I do not want to add a place. And let's 
Think about the line. We started here. This was the 69 degree point here. And this is where we are. So we are on a straight line across exactly where that is facing. And ahead of me is what is a type of cairn I call a connected cairn. That is my own name for it. Um, there are a number of different references to types of cairns, many, many different permutations. The reason why I made up my own term for this is because these are small rows and they connect boulders. All right, so you can see here, it's not likely to have been a foundation for a building, it's on a hillside. You see it here. I'm not going to go all the way through this. There is a very interesting structure that starts it all the way down at the end. We will come back in the next few episodes and cover connected cairns along with split stone cairns to round out our, our cairn episodes. But this is a sort of a V-shaped structure that heads around here. So right where we are here is the angle back to the original cairn. And this angle carries right along this wall and in this direction. And you can see another whole thicket we're going to go around. The nice thing is we've got a nice line on the map and we can pick it back up over that hill. Additionally, if you wanted to come out and do this yourself, I don't normally divulge location of structures for obvious reasons, um, but that cairn uh, that we started out at is, is a well-known cairn. It's marked on the internet. I will include its location uh, both in the URL and in the uh, grid coordinates in the description here. Uh, and if you have some doubt as to my methodology Feel free to come out, check it out for yourself. All right, we're gonna pick this back up when we get over this next step. Okay, if you can make this out, this double dot right there is where we started. This is where I marked the 69 degree point at the thicket. This red one is, I dropped that at the cairn, at the corner of the L-shaped cairn. This is where the interesting, on the left, the interesting uh, Feature is, we'll go back and see another time. And then here's where I am. So it's a straight line, a straight line proceeding in this direction. Now, what's gonna come into focus here as we approach past my bike, which I've hidden behind this boulder, left here a while ago. There's a row of stones on top of an embedded boulder. I am traveling directly right now on that 69 degree azimuth <laughs> that faced out from that cairn. I don't know if you're one to believe in coincidences. I, for one, am not. So a cairn facing out at 69 or 70 degrees, runs past an L-shaped connected parent, cairn, and directly here. I did not know when I set out to start uh, filming these episodes, this structure was here. I'd never seen it before. I just followed the azimuth past that L-shaped cairn and came here. So what are we looking at? That's a good question. Uh, as you know, I'm a fan of prayer seats, but this does not look like one. There's a, I would say, a right side wall here. There's a stone here. There's a stone underneath that dirt there. And a little row up here. You've got what is, and this is fascinating. This, uh, it would be a little perch boulder. So they didn't just lay this stone up. They wanted it to be either off of the rock here a little bit or parallel to the ground. Whatever it was, these two stones were placed here to assist in holding that in place. 
we come over the top, we see this, this, I'll call it a cairn, carries over the top. Now this one, this stone here, resting underneath that one, is held up in the air with this guy here. And as we come down, an interesting feature is a row of rocks, and in the middle, look at that. That is a stone we have type of stone we have seen in the large snake effigy uh, that held up stones in certain features. Um, and we're going to see it in some more episodes in the future. But that is encrusted. It's a it's a type of stone has it's encrusted with very small uh, pieces of quartz. That is. Just, I find that amazing. That this is just sitting out here. You know, maybe, for all we know, it's 9,000 years old. Uh, not likely to have been dropped by glaciers, and certainly three items in an exact line. Not likely, until he's found a little hole over there. I'm gonna go investigate that next. Uh, three items in an exact line. We saw that similarly in the last episode. This one, I would argue, is a bit more compelling and straightforward. These are clearly man-made structures. I got the azimuth right this time, and this one's just amazing, the type of features here. All right, so there you have it. A little detour on the in the series to investigate what appeared to be some similarities in U-shaped cairns with some stones placed in the middle. Those cairns are half a mile apart facing opposite directions, but it just so happens in the directions they do face, there are several uh, items right along the way. I'll give a better read when I get back into production as to the exact distance between the two, but in my rough estimate, uh, the L-shaped cairn, the first object we came in contact with after the U-shaped cairn, was roughly exactly the same distance uh, the first object was from the cairn in the last episode, about 170 yards or so. Well, I'm gonna give a better estimate uh, or a more precise estimate when I get back and line all this up. But here, you never know what you're gonna find in Gilbert Hill State Forest. Uh, a lot of coincidence, if you believe in coincidence, or uh, a further mystery, why L-shaped cairns face out the way they do and why there appear to be structures right along the azimuth in which they face out too. All right, until next time, we're going to get uh, off of this topic specifically and get into some other cairn types, split stone cairns. We're going to get into connected cairns before we move off into things like rings, perched boulders, a number of other uh, types of structures. After that, after we get through all the structures out here, and that's another bunch of episodes, we will then get into some that are very tightly, a bunch of features tightly packed together and map out what could have been specific ceremonial sites. And there are a handful of those out here as well. Until next time, thanks for watching.